Hey, I'm Brian, and what if you could play modern AAA titles at the highest settings at 1080p 60fps on your computer even though you don't have the newest, latest hardware? That's what GeForce Now promises. So I think there are a lot of misconceptions about what GeForce Now is. And I think to clarify what it is, it's easier to say what it isn't. GeForce Now is not a game subscription service. So unlike PlayStation Now, you don't get any games for free included with the monthly subscription price. And that is also why it might be misleading for some people that GeForce Now, the beta, is free. Because they're of course free to play titles in GeForce Now, but you still have to own all of the games that are in it that are paid. So you're prompted to sign in with either your Steam or your Uplay account once you launch one of the games. It's not the case that just all of the games that are listed within the GeForce Now interface are free for you to play you still have to own all of the paid titles in there. You having to own the games is also the reason why there are duplicates inside the GeForce Now menu. Whether you own the game on Uplay or Steam determines which one you need to choose. So that brings us to what GeForce Now is. You're basically renting the hardware to play AAA titles. If you don't have a good enough gaming PC, you can pay the monthly subscription, whatever it is going to cost in the end, in order to be able to have the hardware power to play these games. The games are rendered on Nvidia's servers and then sent back to your computer, so it's basically like Nvidia's game stream or Steam in-home streaming, just that you don't have to have a powerful PC somewhere else in the household, it's all handled in the cloud. That's also where their slogan, gaming PC in the cloud, comes from, because it's basically a whole computer in the cloud that renders the games. You can also see that when you log into Steam, it basically runs a whole instance of Steam on that server. So all of the games that are in the GeForce Now interface are basically just the ones that are installed on their servers. But how is the experience? Well, GeForce Now takes the input from either your mouse and keyboard or a controller or something, sends them to the server, and then sends back the video signal to your PC. So of course the game is rendered at the highest settings because it's running on a high-powered server anyway, but from sending it back to your computer, you will experience some sort of compression and it won't be the same as playing it locally on a great computer. But you can get streaming up to 1080p and 60fps, so it can be beneficial if you just have a bad computer. The interface of GeForce Now is pretty easy to use. There's not a lot to do, so that's just natural. You basically just choose the game you want and hit play. Now, the latency is actually really good, but I have to clarify beforehand that I have a very good internet connection. I have 100 megabits down, 40 megabits up, and the computer is also connected via Ethernet. That is something that is pretty important. Via wireless AC, it also works kind of good, but wireless N is out of the equation, and the best is of course just using an Ethernet cable connected to your computer. But from there, if you have a good internet connection, it's really not that noticeable that the game is rendered somewhere else on another server. It's really quite an enjoyable experience and without any noticeable latency, you really feel like you're just playing the game normally on your computer. GeForce Now even works pretty well on my old Surface 3. That opens up a ton of possibilities because even on an old device that only has an Atom CPU, you could play modern AAA titles in bed with a controller for example. Now this does work over wireless AC, but over wireless N it's just a choppy mess. But that brings us to the question who GeForce Now is actually for because it doesn't include any games in the subscription, so you're really just renting the hardware power. But I can see some people really benefiting from this. For example, if you're a college student and you only have a laptop and you don't really need a second computer or can't afford that, then if GeForce Now, I don't know, costs 10 bucks a month, you can just rent the power for playing some games in the cloud and play them on your laptop. That is something that I find actually pretty appealing. But of course, you have to see that on a laptop you usually don't have an Ethernet connection, which I kind of find interesting, because low-powered hardware is really what this is aimed at, but that hardware usually doesn't have the required Ethernet port. So I guess you'll just have to live the dongle life if you want this kind of use case. Another interesting advantage is that you don't have to install the games, they're all stored in the cloud. Because installing games locally can take time and a lot of storage space. So with this, you can basically outsource all of your game files into the cloud. But it's also interesting because you wouldn't have to pay for it every month. So you could just pay for this one month and then play through a game that you maybe wanted to play and then don't worry about it anymore. So you don't have to buy any expensive hardware just to play a game that you may like. But of course, you still have to own the game. 
that is maybe something that they could include, kind of a more expensive subscription that also includes some of the games that you can play on here. Because the selection of games that they have installed is actually pretty good. So just to include some of the paid titles, maybe some paid indie titles or not the most expensive AAA ones, could be pretty cool. Now there are definitely reasons why this is still in the beta phase. There are some quirks that they still need to work out. When launching a game, for example, you can move the mouse to the lower left hand corner before it goes full screen and thus go to the Windows home screen. This is how I found out that GeForce Now runs on Windows 8 and you can even tweak some of the settings. Now, not that that would matter because these are self-resetting VMs, but it still is a bit weird. So this was just pretty quick what GeForce Now is and what I think of it, which purposes it might have. And if you've never heard of it before, then well, you now know what it is. If you want beta access for yourself, again, they have a free beta for Mac and PC right now. You can check out a link in the video description. I'll put that down there. This video isn't sponsored by NVIDIA or anything, by the way. I just wanted to get this out there because I find the service quite interesting. You know which buttons to press and don't forget to press that follow button on Twitter. I'm Brian, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.